Hey guys, it's Gavin from Frankenstein Engine Dynamics again. On this round of videos, we're gonna be talking about valve springs, rocker arms, push rods, boxes, and... That boy need to put his hands down. A lot more. As Gavin said in the intro, guys, today we're going to be talking about rocker arms. Now, rocker arms have a couple different jobs. And if you've never really messed or changed out any rocker arms before or went to go purchase any, you might be a little bit confused as far as how certain systems work versus others. Today, we're going to also be covering different materials, different shapes, different sizes. And you know what? To give us the basic idea of what a rocker arm does, why don't you explain it to us, Gavin? All right, guys, well, the rocker arm is going to have two main purposes in its life. One is going to be opening and closing the valve by converting the lobe lift that's on your camshaft to your actual valve lift on your valve or your valve spring. Now, by doing that, each rocker is going to have a different rocker ratio. So let's say if you have 350 thousandths of lobe lift on your camshaft, it's going to multiply that number by whatever your ratio is that what your actual valve lift is. Now, the second job of a rocker arm is to help move oil throughout the entire valve train. Now, your push rod is gonna have oil fed from its lifter up to, through the push rod and into the back of the rocker arm here, which then it usually will flow down the rocker arm over your valve tips, the valve, sometimes the roller tip here, and kind of keeps everything nice and cool and nice and lubricated. Now, Gavin, I see a couple different styles here. I see something that some guys call shaft mount stuff. I see a stud or maybe even pedestal mounted. Why don't we just go ahead and let's let's just dive in here next and really explain what is available for the majority of cylinder heads out there and what is right for certain applications. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the type of rocker arms that we have out here. You can see that we have a, a few different various styles of rocker arms here. We got different materials, we got different types of rollers, we got something that's got a flat pad on the bottom. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Now, your main differences between just rocker arms in general are gonna be your stud mount or bolted down rocker arm versus your shaft mount like this. Now this, rocker arm right here, this is gonna be your GM LS3 intake rocker arm. Now you can see that it's it's just sitting here for now, but this actually bolts down to your cylinder head. Most of these stock rockers that are bolted down either with a bolt or a stud mount is gonna be mounted via a pedestal or a rocker stand of some type. And then you have a shaft mount setup that has an entire long shaft that goes across just like a pedestal, but then the rocker arms bolt to the pedestal itself, not into the head. Absolutely correct. So we have that and then we also have different types as far as we have adjustable, we have non-adjustable, we also have a scrub nose or a pad type roller compared to a roller tip as well. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to all of these different systems. If you are looking at getting a cam kit for a late model GM vehicle, then more than likely what you're going to end up with is something like this here, which is going to be your your OEM rocker arm, it's a scrub rocker arm with a, we highly recommend a trunnion kit of some type. Our favorite flavor is the CHE kit from CHE Precision out in California. Now, going from that, okay, that's great. We've been 430s with those before too, using the set of F-Series heads, Preston Brothers did it. You wanna go faster, or maybe you want more durability because there are limitations to Ooh. an OEM rocker arm, for sure. One of the best advantages of it though is it's very, very lightweight. And that helps overall valve train happiness. Valve train happiness goes up, engine happiness goes up, okay? Going from there, we start looking at a shaft mount system. Now this is primarily gonna be used for solid roller applications. Can most certainly be used for hydraulic as well, but it takes a little bit more fine tuning of lobe selection, and spring valve materials. It, it's, a, it's a lot more in depth of a conversation to really and truly have a perfected hydraulic roller shaft mount setup. It's almost harder to do it than a solid roller one, to be honest with you. 
But you see different materials here, you see different shapes. What are they all for? Well, everything you see here is from Jessel. And this stand here is made and manufactured for our F710 cylinder heads, which is right here in front of me. Now, this is a very, very, very crucial piece of the valve train itself. Why is that? Well, whenever you're gonna go throughout the effort to develop a rocker arm system, might as well do the best one you can, right? Absolutely. So what Jessel wanted to go out is they wanted to have three different offerings for our cylinder heads, and especially for the solid roller guys because you're starting to spend a little bit of money, but sometimes it's necessary to either A, make most power we can naturally aspirated, or B, have the amount of control that we want in power adder and also NA applications too. But to get you started off the lowest entry level at the point right now to get a set of what they call sportsman aluminum rocker arms, that's this right here, you're gonna be looking at about $1,900 to go to our F-Series heads. Now they are a little bit more expensive, but most of that cost is involved in this insanely rigid stand that also allows for not only this typical two bolts per rocker system, but also a middle bolt as well. And what that does, that helps with uh, shaft, or sorry, excuse me, stand rotation and deflection. The only downsides to an aluminum rocker, and believe it or not, I'm gonna say it and you may not believe me, but you can go look it up yourself, is the moment of inertia on an aluminum rocker is relatively high, even though if you put it on a gram scale, it's relatively lightweight. It does come with roller tips, it is adjustable, and with our F-Series heads, as far as any of these here, you can run all the way up to, it with a little bit of touch-up, half-inch push rod, which is basically a baseball bat. If you wanna get a little bit more serious, or if you're going, especially if you're going turbo or blower, uh, such as like an 871 roots blower, or hopefully one day somebody with a PSIC rotor. And basically we're gonna have a little bit additional exhaust pressure whenever we go to open up the exhaust valve. So you see it's really popular to have an aluminum intake rocker arm and go to the Jessel, what they call Sportsman Steel rocker arm over here. This design here is made out of steel much, much, much more difficult to try to break this rocker arm. Is it possible? I'm sure it probably is, but it's a lot harder to do. Uh, the moment of inertia, relatively low compared to the aluminum one. Now you go put it on a gram scale, it's gonna weigh a little bit more. What does moment of inertia mean? Well, that means what does the valve train see as far as weight when it's getting flung back and forth at a very high rate of speed? Basically, what the spring sees and what the valve sees as far as weight. Now. This material is definitely needed on really high cylinder pressure applications because as we go to crack that exhaust valve, we've got a lot of cylinder pressure in there and we need to get it out as quick as possible. With an aluminum rocker arm on the exhaust, you can go to a Mohawk style like we have here. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of a bridging here, which is gonna help absorb some of that force compared to the uh, sportsman style. And this is the pro style from Jessel, excuse me, but it is called a Mohawk design. And that is basically gonna take that transient force between the two points of force that are going in opposite directions and be able to have a little bit longer life cycle. So as we crack that open, we have a little bit more durability, less deflection, which is key for getting the accurate duration on your camshaft and getting the accurate lift on your camshaft as well. Now, let's say you wanna go boss hog, you want the baddest of the bad, you wanna go 10,000 plus RPM, and you want almost no deflection in your entire valve train system, they got the answer. That's called Pro Steel. The Pro Steel system, for F-Series stuff is gonna start around $4,500. Yeah, that's about how much cylinder heads cost. No doubt about it, but guess what? You get every single penny that you paid for in these things. I can attest to it firsthand. I was lucky enough to do a little bit of experimentation over at EFI University with Ben Schrader with this exact rocker arm, and my goodness gracious, am I impressed. The best part about our valve train in our cylinder heads is we were able to work hand in hand for over a year with the team of engineers at Jessel to create the absolute best valve train system that we possibly could using this casting. That's a big superior breakthrough, especially as you can see with a little bit wider valve cover rail, we were able to get a little bit more serious with our stand and with rocker ratios. We can go all the way up to a 2.0 ratio. Now to talk about ratio. Yeah, let's get into ratio. Go ahead ratio. and let's talk about that. So your rocker ratio is going to be how much it's going to convert your lobe lift to valve lift. Now, 
To dive into this a little bit, there's certain parts of a rocker arm that we need to discuss. Your distance from, let me actually grab this guy instead. Your distance from the center of this pivot point here to the center of this point here is gonna be what's called your fulcrum. Now the distance between your main pivot point here to here versus the distance from here to there is gonna be your rocker ratio. In this case, it's a Manton 1.750. That means that this distance here is about 75% larger or longer than this distance here. And now there may be some consequences or benefits to going to one ratio versus another. If you're a small block Chevrolet guy, you may think that you got a little spicy going to a 1.6 ratio rocker. Well, guess what? On today's, on Gen 5 LTs, they're all 1.8. That's a pretty big jump. So what happens if you keep the camshaft the same? We have a spring that can that is capable of handling everything from, let's say, I don't know, uh, a 1.8 to a 2.0 ratio. Basically, what are the events or the consequences of doing so? Well, number one, you're gonna get more valve lift because you're now multiplying the motion from the sent from the pivot point here to the tip of the rocker arm by two over what it's getting from the push rod. Now, if we, by doing that, we're also speeding everything up. So if you have some really nice lackadaisical lobes that are big, fat, and round, you might be okay with that because basically what's gonna happen is nice and slowly open. Well, now it's gonna be a quick and snappy action. Same thing though, on the way back, which is not something that a lot of folks think about. Yes, the benefit is you get more lift and that's awesome, but we're speeding things up, which means that we're going to, anytime you increase speed, we increase wear. Increase, and then at that point, durability starts to come back down. Is there a happy medium? Absolutely there is. The one eight stuff, as far as what we've been doing, has worked in 90% of applications. However, if you do get limited due to uh, crankshaft size with distance from crank to cam center line, you can only put such a big lobe on something or cam tunnel, usually the limiting factor of putting a lobe on something, you gotta increase the rocker ratio to get the higher lift numbers to take advantage of a high, of a high flowing cylinder head, such as this F710 here. Now, as we've covered all the materials here, let's just go back through it real quick in case anybody missed it. You just want to get into something as far as solid roller stuff. It's going to be the Jessel Sportsman. You can also, you want to be a little bit more serious or if you have really high cylinder pressure uh, conditions, but you're kind of on a budget, you can go half and half. You can split them. And you can even have individual ratios between the two as well if you'd like. Jessel is more than accommodating for these options. Then if you want to go Mac Daddy, you can go in between either the Sportsman Steel on both sides or you can go with the Pro Steel on both sides, which is my personal favorite. If you're over here like Gavin in his Turbo C10, honestly, the best rocker arm for his application is an OEM rocker arm. Absolutely. Now, Mike is a little bit more of their old school, small block, big block Chevy. He likes that big naturally aspirated nitrous applications where they do need a lot of lift. They need a really stable valve train off top. They need that roller tip to take advantage of that Absolutely. additional lift. Now, some of the Gen 5 LT or the Gen 3, Gen 4 LS, for the majority of hydraulic roller engines, whether if it's turbo, nitrous, NA, if they're not seeing over, let's say on an LS1 or LS3, something around, let's say 650 Sorry. lift. Mm -hmm. On an LS7, we can get a little bit more lift mm -hmm. and also does already have a 1.8 rocker versus the 1.7 on right. the uh, LS1, LS3. Majority of your hydraulic roller applications, uh, a stock rocker with a trunning upgrade. Another rocker that I'd like to um, we'll show them in a talk minute. Talk about yeah. would be the Texas Speed roller tip rocker. It looks just like your factory rocker, but it's going to have a roller tip on the end. That's going to help with a little bit less guide wear as the stock pad tends to push the valve a little bit forward and backward in that valve guide versus a roller being able to push it directly down. Um, as far as strength and RPM on a stock rocker, the world's fastest hydraulic roller LS spins 8,700 RPM and makes just shy of 2,300 horsepower to the tire. That's a lot of power. And guess what? It's using a stock rocker arm. So that shows the capability of, of what this can do. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Now, if you're, and once again, we've seen it with other guys as well, using the stock rocker arm and having great success, almost zero issues. And there are a couple different aftermarket options. That one from Texas Speed with the adjuster in the back, yep. really nice feature, 
I love that as well. Manton also makes an LS7 replacement that we're gonna show you guys here in just a minute because there's a couple different rocker arm options as far as how you're gonna select and purchase them if you are looking at getting an aftermarket set. And I think now's about as good of time as ever to show them. Let's do it. All right guys, we wanted to show you a little bit about what actually happens with the rocker arm as it goes through the entire lift curve on both the intake and the exhaust. We also wanted to show you a little bit of differences as far as between a roller tip and a OEM scrub rocker, specifically on a GM LS7 application. So Gavin, if you would do me the honors, please. Sure. So right here we have our typical LS7 intake rocker arm. And over here, we have our Manton exhaust rocker arm. Now, this is a roller tip designed from Manton. And for all you tech gurus at home, yes, I did have to make that in like 15 minutes. That's not a real push rod. I didn't have a cup push rod that was shorter than 12 and a half inches, unfortunately. So, we're gonna already go through it. We've already opened the intake. Intake's gonna start coming back around. And as you can see, that the nose on the scrub rocker arm, it hits the whole entire contact patch. So if you have the tip of the valve, the contact patch is gonna come right back across such as this right here. And it, yes, it does have a little bit of wear. Now, is it substantial amount of wear? Not in a proper system. It's almost unnoticeable for under 100,000 miles in most cases. So now we're gonna to start to go and open the exhaust here. We're almost there. Here we go. Now, as you can see, the roller tip rocker arm started off a little bit back on the valve, is gonna to go towards this, the exhaust side tip of the valve, and then come back as well. That's the way a roller tip rocker arm is designed. The shoe rocker always starts at the back, ends up at the tip going forward every single time, no matter what you do. Manton has designed this to be a drop-in replacement for LS7s. Works pretty well, especially with a dual spring application. And that right there is P, that's peak lift right there. So now what we were talking about earlier uh, on the on our spring video over there at the Buxton, this is exactly what we're talking about as far as open height. This intake spring over here is at the installed height of inch 800. This one is at its open height right now on the exhaust. So taking a look at it, you can get a little bit maybe of a better visual. I know some folks are vocal learners and me myself, I'm definitely a visual learner. So hopefully this helps for a lot of folks as far as what these different rocker arm styles have to offer from either shaft mount to OEM to aftermarket replacements. This is just about everything that we've got to, get, uh, got to go for starting for off with rocker arms. So Gavin. All right guys, that's gonna sum it up for today. Make sure that you guys like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can see all of our next videos. If you want some men's grooming tips or if you have any suggestions for other videos, please email us right here.